How y'all good people doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want three free stocks, Weeble is gonna give you three free stocks. When you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put any amount of money in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you three free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of the video. Go click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Guys, in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how to finally free yourself from financial poverty. When I was a little kid, where I lived, the neighborhood, pretty much we were all in the same boat. So as a little kid, I didn't know anything about being rich or having a lot of money or any of that stuff. Because where I come from, everybody was the same. We all just made ends meet, every family. There was no family across the street that did better than the family on that side of the street. We all experienced the same financial poverty. And when I started going to school, elementary school, that's when I started to see that other people lived differently. They had nicer things. And I, I can remember coming home and, and wondering, why don't I have these things? See, see, as a little kid, we use our vision to really kind of learn about life, right? We, 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 we are not so much going to listen to what someone tells us. We, we learn from seeing what others do and seeing what others have. So as a little kid, I'm thinking, why I only got one pair of shoes, but this kid has five pair of shoes. He wears a different pair of shoes every day. What separates him from me? Well, I, I tell you guys, some, some folks had historical reasons for why they did better than other folks. And I didn't know that as a kid. All I knew was these people over here or this person over here had something that I didn't have. And I, and I said to myself, as a little kid, I said, you know something, I, I, I want to be in a position at some point that I don't have to look at someone else and wonder why I don't have what they have. And again, guys, this is not about materialism. Not about materialism. See, financial poverty stems from other areas of our life that we're in poverty, right? It stems from other areas of our life, whether it be relationships, whether it be mental, whether it be spiritual. See, if we're, if we're in poverty, in other areas of our life, it's going to be really hard for us to get out of financial poverty, especially with the mental, especially if we have a history 
of the wrong behavior with money. And unfortunately, for many of us, we have that history of bad behavior with money because it comes up through the generations, right? That's one of the reasons why when, when, when we think about groups of people and we think about who controls the wealth in this country, a lot of that wealth is not controlled by black Americans. A lot of that wealth is not controlled by black Americans. And, and I know some people get triggered when I, when I talk about black Americans and their wealth. I know people get triggered by that, but you know something? I don't care if they get triggered. See, this financial poverty thing is really, really prevalent. It's very prevalent in black Americans' lives. Now, I know financial poverty is also prevalent in other groups of people's lives as well. But when we look at a percentage, a percentage, right? When we look at the 35 million black Americans, we have a higher percentage of poverty in our life. Like I told you, I came from a neighborhood, guys, where everybody was financially poverty stricken. Everybody, every family. You show me in America where there's a community where everybody is poverty stricken. And I will tell you, a good majority of those communities still exist. But how do you get yourself? How did I get myself out of financial poverty at five years old? We were, we were in financial poverty. Now, that doesn't mean we lack love. We had a lot of love, a lot of love. But we had very little money. And we were living below the poverty line. Just like some of you right now are living below the poverty line. But I'm here to tell you today, no matter what our historical background is, we can change that. We can change it now. But before we can change our financial poverty situation, we really have to change some other areas of our life that were poverty stricken. And a lot of us are poverty stricken when it comes to our behaviors with money. Now, a lot of that stems from historical reasons, right? We were never taught much about money or wealth because no one in our families ever had wealth. And a lot of us, nobody in our family ever had any money or very little of it. So if, so if my grandparents lived in poverty, my parents lived in poverty, then there's a very, very, very strong likelihood that I could also live in poverty. But I vowed to myself I would change that. But it all started with this. See, at 26 years old, even though I had went to college, graduated from college, had a, a little short stint in the NFL, playing, playing three years in the NFL, I found myself at 26 years old in financial poverty. Now, you may ask yourself, well, how in the world can you go to college get a degree, go play in the NFL for three years, make money, but at 26, you're still living below the poverty line. How in the world can that be? My behaviors with money, guys, was terrible. I knew nothing about how to keep money or multiply money. 
I knew how to make it because I come from a family of people who, who worked. They were not lazy people. They worked and they worked their butts off. I'm talking about my grandparents, my parents, all my uncles, all my aunts. Everybody in my family worked. The problem was we lacked the basic understanding of how to use that money that we earned to make it more. We lacked that. So at 26 years old, although I was a college graduate, played three years in the NFL, I found myself at 26 years old with no job, no net worth. So technically, I was living below the poverty line, guys. But, but, but at 26, I had a decision to make, just like many of you who are financially in poverty. See, a lot of folks think, see, a lot of folks think, no, I'm not in poverty. I, I make 50 grand a year. I make 60 grand a year. I make 80 grand a year. I make 100 a year. But guess what? If you're living on more than what you make, if you don't have an emergency fund, if you're up to your eyeballs in credit card debt, if you got car loans that, that are upside down, you owe more than it's worth and you're carrying this big old gigantic car payment. And at the end of the month, you got you to gotta, you gotta pick between do I pay the mortgage, do I pay the rent, do I buy groceries, or do I pay this, that is financial poverty, guys. Did you not hear me? I was 26 years old. College graduate. Played three years in the NFL. And I was still financially in, po in, in, in poverty. Guys, listen. Financial poverty comes in all shapes and sizes. It's just not somebody who is homeless or, or someone who's on food stamps or somebody you see and you have pity for because they, they don't look like that. Guys, that's just one side of poverty. We got a lot of poverty in our country. We got a lot of poverty in the black community in this country. We got a lot of poverty in every community in this country. And the only way to get yourself out of financial poverty is you got to change your behavior with money. You do. I had to. I had to change my behavior with money or at 55 years old, I would still be in financial poverty. The only thing saves you from financial poverty, guys, is you got to change your behavior with money. I don't care how much you make. It's what you keep and what you multiply. I don't care what you make. Oh, I make, I make a great salary. Let me tell me how much of it you keep, though. How much do you keep? How much do you multiply? Does any of it come into your bank account from passive investments? Or the only thing that comes into your bank account is active earning, where I gotta go out and trade time for money. Now, hey, I'm not knocking trading time for money because I did it for 25 years when I was in banking. But see, when I was earning that money in banking, I learned that it does not matter how much I make. What matters is how much I keep and how much I multiply. That's what matters. That's the only thing saves me from financial poverty in the long run. Back to what I said earlier about other areas of your life that you need to clean up because those were areas of my life I needed to clean up. See guys, I'm not gonna talk to you about anything I hadn't went through myself. See, I had to clean up my spiritual poverty. I had to clean up my relationship poverty. I had to clean up my mental poverty. I had to clean up 
my mental poverty. And see, that was the big one for me was the mental poverty because I hadn't been told anything about money. I hadn't been told anything about money up until 26 years old, even though I went to college, graduated from college. I didn't learn anything about how to keep money and multiply money. They taught me how to get a job. That's what college does, guys. It teaches you how to get a job. Doesn't teach you anything about how to keep money and multiply it. That's on you. Why is that? Because our financial system is set up so that 99% of Americans, 99% of Americans don't know how to keep money and multiply it so that 1% of Americans can prosper. That's the financial system in this country. But when you know that and you use that to your advantage, then, then and only then, will you move yourself from that financial poverty category. A lot of us think we're doing well, but we're really not. We think we're doing well because we got a good job. See, that's our safety net. A lot of us believe, hey, I don't know what this guy is talking about. I'm doing great. Listen, man, if you're working for somebody else and they pay you, they control your financial power. Therefore, they control whether you are in financial poverty because they control the money. They control the money that you use to take care of yourself. How in the world is that not financial poverty? When somebody else controls every single dollar that belongs to you, they control it. Guys, that's financial poverty. The only way you get yourself out of that is you got to build assets that generate income so that you can control your financial power, not someone else. So if you're getting up tomorrow, going to work for somebody else, I don't care if you're even getting up tomorrow, going to work at your own business. You're still controlled by what? Someone else. Why? Because if that person doesn't come in and buy one of your goods or services, you got no revenue. And if you got no revenue, you can't pay yourself. So now who controls your financial power? Your customer, not you. Your customer controls your financial power. So even if you're in business for yourself, your customer controls your financial power. If you go to work for someone, they control your financial power. The only way you 100% control your financial power and get yourself out of financial poverty is through assets. Sorry, that's the only way, through assets. Now, some people will say, hey, I get Social Security. I ain't got to go to work. Guess who controls your financial power now? The government. Because they pay you your Social Security. The government decided they weren't going to pay you Social Security anymore. What would happen to you? How long would you be able to last? For some of you older folks out there that's taking Social Security right now. How long would you be able to last if the government turned off the money printer and stopped paying your Social Security? Some of you that are not at the point where you're collecting Social Security, but you're, you're getting yourself there, right? You're thinking, okay, boom, I'm going to spend 10 more years, 15 more years working, and then I'm going to get my pension, and I'm going to get my Social Security, and I'm going to be good. If you're waiting on a pension from a company, then I would not put all of my eggs in that basket. Have you not been listening to what's happening with these pensions that these companies are investing these pensions with people out here in, in the world, whether it be hedge funds or institutional investors? And who knows what these institutional investors and these hedge funds are doing with your money that's in the pension? Who knows? But I guarantee you go out online and you will find story after story 
of pensions being wiped out because why? Somebody else had your financial power. Somebody else was controlling the money that you had put blood, sweat, and tears in for 30 years, whether it be a teacher's pension, whatever it is. All I'm telling you guys is understand whoever pays you controls your financial power. Whoever pays you, right? Whether it be the government, whether it be an employer, or whether it be Social Security, whether it any of that stuff, whoever pays you controls your financial power. So this financial poverty thing, I think we've made it clear, or at least I've made it clear. It doesn't mean you're destitute. It doesn't mean you're, you're, you're living on skid row. Mm -mm. You can be in a nice four bedroom, four bath, 5,000 square foot home, multiple cars, gated community, the whole nine and be in financial poverty. Again, guys, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep and multiply. So if you wanna judge whether you're in financial poverty or not, you wanna measure, look at that. Look at your assets. Look at your net worth, excluding your house. Take the house out of the net worth number and look at your assets versus your liabilities. That will give you your net worth. And then I want you to take it one step further. I, I want you to do a liquidity check. And a liquidity check from a net worth standpoint is, I want to know how much liquidity do I have? How much cash? How much marketable securities do I have? Something that I can turn to cash instantly. See, real estate and some of these other investments, they are illiquid. You can't turn them into cash quickly. See, real estate, whether you got, let's say you got $400,000 worth of equity in your house, it's illiquid. Why? Because I can't turn that $400,000 in cash in 24 hours. It's gonna take me 60 days, 90 days, 120 days to sell the house. Then it turns into cash. So, so take the house away, right? Take the cars away, because we, we, some folks like to put the cars in, the, in their net worth calculation. No, no, don't put that in the net worth calculation, right? Take the cars out, take the house out, and only focus on cash and marketable securities, right? Those are the two things. Look at that. Look at your cash and your marketable securities against your liabilities and see what your net worth is. That will tell you that will tell you if you control your own financial destiny. So if I got 100,000 in cash, I got another 300,000 in, in stocks, uh, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, index funds, that gives me a total of 400K in liquid cash. And then if I got $200,000 in liabilities, now, my current assets can cover my liabilities. Current assets is what can be turned into cash quickly. A house does not go into current assets because it can't be turned into cash quickly, right? So that's where you want to measure whether you're financially in poverty or not, right? Again, it's not about someone living under a bridge, that's the only people in poverty. Or somebody, oh, they don't have much money, they get assistance, they get food stamps, or they go to the, they go to the you know, the soup kitchen. Or, see, see that's, 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 that's America, that's how they want us to think, right? That's how the 1% wants us to think, that don't, that's poverty. You ain't in poverty, you got a BMW. You ain't in poverty, you got a house. You ain't in poverty, you got a good job. Mm -mm -mm. Because if that job is taken away from you, how long will you survive? How long can you survive if, 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 if the job is taken away from you? How long can you survive if the business that you run in shuts down? How long can you survive? That'll tell you if you're in financial poverty or not or headed that way, guys. Do the calculation. Take a look at what I'm asking you to take a look at. Be honest with yourself. 
See, a lot of times here in America, they want us, they want us in a fog. They want us where we can't see. They want us blind. Not, not, not physically, but, but, but financially, right? Because, see, this is the only way they can manipulate us. This is the only way they can manipulate us to take our hard-earned money and buy crap we don't need, right? That's the only way. But I'm here to tell you guys, listen, if you lost your job or your business shut down or, or, or your Social Security got cut off, let me just tell you, how long would you be able to survive? Would you be able to keep the BMW? Would you be able to keep the, the, the beautiful house? Would you be able to keep up the, the luxury trips? Would you be able to keep up whatever you spend your money on? Would you? You got to ask yourself that question, guys. I'm just trying to get you to think. Because I'm telling you, at 26 years old, I was terrified. I had no choice. I had to change something in my financial life. I was terrified. When I was five years old, watching those other kids live a different lifestyle than I lived, had nothing to do with love because my home was full of love. My mother was a great mom. She worked two, three jobs, whatever she needed to do to take care of us. But as a five-year-old, I still noticed that something was different financially at five. So from five to 26, I never figured it out. I just went through life thinking, oh, that's just the way it is. Some folks are poor. Other folks are rich. I'm just going, well, we poor. That's what we all are. That's what we all have been until I got to 26 years old and said, no, that, that can't be right. I can't be right. I don't have to be poor. I don't have to be uh, 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 financially in poverty. I, I can change that. I got the ability to change that. But I got to start here. Right? I got to start here. I can't make any excuses. I can't blame somebody else. No. No. I just had to take ownership that I'm a grown man and I got no job and I'm dead broke. I just had to take, I had to take ownership of that. See, some of us don't want to take ownership of it, though, for some reason. We, 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 we want to literally... Try to blame everybody else in the world for our problems but us. See, I got a family member like that. Every time I talk to him, it's everybody else. It's their fault. It's never his fault. See, I, 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 I don't understand that. Not when we have the ability to change this. But a lot of us don't want to. Or we feel like we're not capable of it. Guys, let me tell you something. Listen, the only way something changes in your life is if you change it. Now, if you want to sit here and, 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 and be in financial poverty, go right ahead. Let me tell you something. The world is not going to care. They're going to keep moving. No one's going to care. No one's going to care. So if you don't want to care, then, hey, continue down that path. I just, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you, if you hit a financial bump in the road, it's going to sting. It's going to hurt. Especially if you're not prepared, guys. Prepare yourself. Financial poverty in this country or, or anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world is painful. Financial poverty is painful. Now, we live in the greatest country in the world here. The greatest country in the world. I didn't say a perfect country. I didn't say we would not. I did not say we didn't have our share of problems. We got some problems and we're not perfect. But let me tell you, if you're somebody that want to change this, 
and, and get out there and create a financial pathway for yourself, you can do it. I can't say that for every other country in the world, but for the United States, I can say that. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what language you speak. If you're here living in the United States and you're willing to do the work up here, change your behavior with money, no stopping you. See, a lot of people don't want to do that, though. See, a lot of people want somebody else to take on the responsibility of getting them where they need to go. They look for shortcuts. They don't want to pay the financial price. Hate to tell you guys, there's no way to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow without paying some type of financial price for it. You're going to have to pay the price. But if you're willing to pay the price, you can go from nothing financially to anything you could ever imagine. I went from nothing at 26 years old to, to, to everything I've ever wanted. And guess what? It ain't got nothing to do with money. The money was just a tool. The lifestyle that I lead and, 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 and the ownership I have of my time, the ownership I have of my financial power to control my own financial destiny, priceless. There's not an amount of money in the world could do anything for me that that hasn't done. More time, more choices, more freedom. That's what it's about. The money, the wealth, it's just a tool. Please understand that, guys. So if you're out here chasing money, you can chase it. But when you catch it, it's not going to make you happy. You better find something in your life bigger than money. You better find something in this life that means more to you than money. That means more to you than fear. That means more to you than procrastination. You better find something in this life to grab a hold of when times get hard. You better. Or you will be in that financial poverty bucket for the rest of your life. I don't care how much you make. Like I said earlier, guys, you can make all your money you want to make. Because I, I, I hear that a lot. People, oh, I'm good. And then when I start talking to them and say, well, okay. Tell me what your net worth is when you take your house out. Don't include the house. What's your net worth? How much assets do you have and how much income will those assets generate? See, that's the true test, man. I keep telling y'all, that's the true test. Not this job that you work at, not this business that you run. That's not the true test because if they take you out of that business, ain't no business. Take you out of the business, ain't no business. So you the business. Oh no, I got five employees. I don't care if you had 15 employees. Take you out of the business for most people. I'm talking about 99% of people who own businesses. Take them out of that business, the business fails within six months. Because most people do what? They work in their business. They don't work on their business. They work in the business. You know the difference? See, someone that works in their business means they're in there doing all the grunt work, doing everything, everything. They do every day, 10 hours, 12, 15 hours a day doing everything. See, they work in the business. Well, you need to get to the point where you work on the business. See, if you have a business that you can leave for three months and it runs like clockwork, nothing goes wrong, nothing happens. That's where you want to be in that position. You want to, you want to be out growing the business, not working in the business. At, at some point, you want to be able to remove yourself from that business and it operates flawlessly. If you can't remove yourself from your business, then, then I would say that's where you need to head to. Because if you're the business, like 99% of people are, 
and something happens to you, how are you going to take care of yourself if you don't got no assets? So financial poverty, guys, is, 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 that I'm talking about tonight it, is people who have a false sense of security. They have a false sense of security because they got a job. Ah, I got a job. I'm doing great. That's a false sense of security because anything can happen to that job. And most people are not prepared for that. That's why 61, almost 62% of people live paycheck to paycheck in this country. See, people ain't prepared for losing a job and because you know, most people don't have an emergency fund. So how are you gonna live? And with credit card debt where it is in our country, 1.3 trillion and climbing, I would say most folks who did have access to credit card limits, those limits have turned into balances. Just look at the credit card debt, the way it shot up in 2023. So now we're in 2024. What are you going to do? What's your game plan? What's your game plan to get out of that financial poverty? And we've already defined what that is. I'm talking about assets or lack thereof. See, I look at financial poverty as someone who don't have sufficient assets to be able to take care of them. Right? In my opinion, that's financial poverty. And, 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 and we control that, though. Right? We control that. Because the money that we make, what we do with that money, determines whether we're going to be in financial poverty or not. Now, a lot of us are in financial poverty because we take our money and we do what? We make other people wealthy. We just passed through the holidays. I was reading an article about the holiday shopping and stuff. All-time records. Broke all-time records in spending over a two-month period, two, three-month period. All-time record. Now, why in the world would we have an all-time record when we got 4% inflation and inflation should be 2%? We, it's 4%. Interest rates are through the roof. You can't even get a mortgage under 7%. 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Can't even get one under 7%. People still spending. Like it ain't no tomorrow. Still spending. Still haven't taken heed to... It's a trap, guys. It's a trap. It's a trap that we fall into as a consumer. See, our economy is predicated on consumerism, right? That's what drives it. 70% of our economy is made up of consumerism. People like you and I spending money on crap we don't need. All along, we're in financial poverty, though, because if we miss one paycheck, we're done. Done. But yet and still, yet and still, though, I can go online and people online fighting about crap they have no control over. No control over. But nobody talking about what they do got control over. But we'd rather sit online and argue back and forth, be keyboard warriors, and go into every other area of life, politics, uh, social this, uh, you know, what orientation people are. We'd we rather fight about that tooth and nail. We will fight about that tooth and nail. But yet and still, we won't pay attention to things that we control. None of that you can't control, man. Keep telling people that. We fight about things in this country we have no control over. But the things that we do have control over, we let go by the wayside. We ignore. Like this financial poverty thing. We ignore that. Because we think we got a job. We good. I, uh, uh, if I can just not think about it, it'll go away. If I cannot think about that $10,000 in credit card debt I have, it'll just go away. If I can just not think about this $700 a month car payment I got that I'm upside down in, I just don't think about it. I, I don't think about that. Let me get over here and argue about who the president going to be. That's what I want to argue about. <laughs> like you really got any, any 
uh, control over who the president going to be. Like, like, like here in the United States, we really get to pick the president. Guys, come on, guys. You know better than that, right? You know better than that. See, but we but we will fight and argue about things we have no control over. But yet and still the things that we can control, we ignore until it's too late, like our health. See, we'll ignore our health until something happened and, and, and we hurt and on a deathbed. Then all of a sudden we want to we want to we want to try to do something. But all these years we could have been doing something about our health. We ignored it. We, we'd rather get online and fight with people about something that's going on in some other country. That's what we'd rather do. But we'll ignore our own health that we can control. We'd rather get online and fight about what money is going to another country when we won't even sit down in our own household and look at our own income and figure out where we're spending our own money at. But we want to control where the United States of government sends money. I know it's taxpayer money. But guess what? That's the price you pay to live in the United States. How do you think this country going to run? Uh, on nothing? No, they're going to run on people like you and I paying taxes. That's how it operates. So for some of us, oh, I don't want to pay no taxes. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Well, hey, man, don't pay them. I, I'm going to pay my taxes. Right? I'm going to pay mine. See, I don't have a problem paying taxes, guys, because why? I got the right behavior with money. I know how money works. Right? I don't have power paying taxes. I'm going to pay my fair share. I'm not going to I'm not gonna try to evade paying taxes. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to pay my fair share. But see, some people, they want to worry about all this other stuff that they can't control. Worry about the things you can't control, guys, like your financial situation. Because we're in trouble in this country, man. You got 100 million adults don't have no money in retirement savings, guys. You do understand we only have 300 and, 350 million people in total in this country, including kids. So if you've got 100 million adults, goose egg, that's not alarming. $1.3 trillion in credit card debt is not alarming. I, here's all I'm saying, guys. If you want to change something, change it. There ain't no excuses. There ain't nobody to blame. You have to change it. Wherever you are today financially, you put yourself there. You put yourself there. The good news is it only takes you to get yourself out of it if you change this the way you think about money. Guys, I don't know who you're listening to in your, in your everyday life about your finances. I'm not sure who you're listening to on, online or in, in the physical. I don't know if you got financial advisors or whoever you got. My recommendation is sit down with whoever or with yourself and figure out the game plan for 2024. 2024 going to happen with or without you. It's going to happen. Time is not going to stop for us. Right? We see what investments, specifically paper assets, did in 2023. We had, a, we, we had an opportunity. Number one, we had an opportunity in 2022 to pick up assets heavily discounted on my YouTube channel. You guys can go back to my videos from 2022 and check them out. I, I, I constantly said to you guys, you build your wealth when everything is discounted. That's where the wealth comes from. When they're discounted. When, when, they're, when they're trading below where they normally trade. Not that it's a bad company. It's just where we are in our economy. 22 was a great year to buy all of these assets heavily, heavily discounted. Guess what happened in 2023 for those that did that? They saw a really, really huge jump in their net worth. Why? Because those assets that they bought in 2022, specifically paper assets, if you bought blue chip, 
big boy paper assets, they increased in value in 2023. The NASDAQ, the NASDAQ went up by 40% in 2023. The NASDAQ, right? The S&P 500 index had all time high, over 4,700 points. So had you been invested, had you not been on the sideline, had you been dollar cost averaging in all through 22, all through 23, you'd have had a huge net worth gain right now. So why am I telling you that? Because it's not too late. See, 24, you got to understand what's happening, especially for us folks who are straddling that fence of financial poverty. Hear me out. 24, in my opinion, I'm no expert here, not trying to be your financial advisor. I'm just giving you a little bit of my opinion. See, I've been doing this for a long time, guys. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I've had my losses, but I've had more wins than I've had losses. I'm telling you in 24, there's an opportunity. See, I believe the S&P 500, just my beliefs, this is not scientific. I, 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 listen, I, I didn't watch Bloomberg. I didn't watch CNBC. One of the talking heads on there didn't tell me this. This is just my belief because I've looked at the, the history of the S&P. Right? I believe when the Federal Reserve starts reducing short-term interest rates, and I believe that will happen in 2024. Right. See, when when interest rates go up. Assets go down. Why is that? Why is that? See, a lot of people borrow money to buy assets. But when money is too expensive to borrow, they can't borrow it. So assets suffer. Right. But when interest rates start going down and money becomes a little bit less expensive to borrow, now assets go up. Think about it from a business standpoint as well. When businesses can borrow money cheap, 2%, 3%, and then turn around and take that money that they borrowed at 2% or 3% and put it into their machine. They put it into growth. And that money that they put into growth, let's say it returns an 8% return. They borrowed it for three. 5% upside. That's when businesses do what? They become more profitable. If businesses become more profitable, their stock price goes up. Right? So that's when you see what? Companies do well. That's why when interest rates start coming down in 24, they're not going to come way down, but they're going to start coming down enough where investors are going to get excited about that. Investors are going to get excited. Also, you got to understand when interest rates, short term interest rates come down, that makes other investments that are driven by short term interest rates less appealing to investors. See, when interest rates are five and a half percent and you can get a you can get a 10 year treasury bond at five percent. Some investors are going to say, you know something, you got this volatile stock market over here up and down. I may lose my shirt. I can get a guaranteed five percent over here and not lose one bit of my principal and get a. So guess what they do? They opt to take their money out of the stock market and put it over here in a five year treasury bond. I mean, a 10 year treasury bond. But that's going to change because when rates come down, rates are going to come down on treasury bonds. They're going to come down on money market accounts, high yield savings account. All of that stuff is going to come down when short term interest rates come down. And guess what investors are going to do? They're going to look at their opportunity over here, start to dwindle. Oh, golly, I used to get a 5 percent 10 year treasury. Now it's 2 percent. Now it's eh. Let me go back to the stock market. Let me go back to paper assets. And that's what's going to happen, in my opinion. 
Listen, guys, I'm no, I'm no, hey, I only been doing this for 20 something years and made a lot of money doing it. That's all. I ain't no expert, but I just, it, it, it's elementary stuff. It's, 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 if just think about it. If it's cheap for me to borrow money, and if I'm a smart business person, I'm gonna borrow this cheap money and put it over here somewhere I can get a better return on it. That's all people do. That's what the 1% does. That's what big companies do. Every company ain't got the balance sheet that Apple has where they got all these trillions of dollars in cash. Most of these companies you see in the S&P 500 are great companies, but if they can borrow money treat cheap and get and invest it into growth, they do it. So all I'm telling you is 24, a lot of people are, oh, I'm gonna sit on the sideline, it's too high right now. I think the S&P 500 is gonna go to 5,500 points. That's my opinion. What is it trading at now, under 47? Somewhere in that area? I think it'll go to 55. So there's a lot of upside, at least for me. So I'm still in VOO. I'm still in it. it, it, it oh, what, what if it takes a dip? Great, I want it to. I'm gonna buy more. I'll buy the dip down. Great. If it temporarily dropped down from 4,700 points to 4,300 points, oh man, that, I'm waiting on that. I'm gonna swoop right in and buy it. More of it. Especially if it, if it falls, because I know it's temporary. There is no way interest rates are coming down, guys, and the stock market is gonna just, oh, it don't explode at some point. It, it's not gonna happen. Look at the history. Look at history. Go out and do some research. There's no way short-term interest rates come down, especially if they come down three times, like the Fed has already said in their last Fed meeting, the idea is to bring rates down by three times next year. I don't know how large those, those uh, decreases will be, but the Fed has already said three times. So what does that tell me as an investor? What does that tell me that somebody that's trying to figure out a way to, to take this money that I earn, keep it, and then multiply it so I can get myself out of this, this financial poverty that I find myself in. Because if you don't have assets, liquid assets, more than what your liabilities are, you're in financial poverty. Period. If your assets, I'm talking about your current assets, not talking about no house, I'm talking about your current assets, which would be cash and marketable securities. Not some, uh, oh, I got 10 gold bars in my, in my, in my, uh, in my safe. Mm -mm. Not that. Not that. What are you going to do? Somebody going to come to your house and buy 10 gold bars from you? No, not that. I'm talking about cash or marketable securities that I can click a button. Poof, it's cash. It's in my bank account. That's what I'm talking about. If you don't have current assets, greater than your liabilities, you're insolvent. You are living on more than you make. So if you're in that situation, you can change it. You can change it. Number one thing you gotta do is stop spending your money to make other people wealthy. You gotta make a decision to do that. That's on you. Only person can make that decision is you. You gotta stop spending your money making other people wealthy. You got to make that as number one goal for 2024. No more spending my money to make someone else wealthy. That's it. That's what you got to stop first. Once you do that, second thing you got to do is say, hmm, what do I want to build my net worth to? Right? Excluding my house. Because if I take my house out, my net worth ain't that good. Why? Because I ain't got no cash. Two, I may or may not have marketable securities. It depends on if I'm doing a 401k or if I got a taxable brokerage account, if I got a Roth. But the easy exercise to do is look at your cash, your marketable securities, and then look at your debts. If those debts are more than your current assets, that's a problem. That's a problem. That is a problem. So please, guys, take heed. Sit down. 
We're still in the beginning of 24. We got time, but not much time because we're going to go to bed, wake up. It's going to be May, just like that. Five months gone. You're going to be like, whoa, I thought I had more time, right? Think about all these people who sat on the sidelines in 2023. Think about all these people who sat on the sidelines saying, oh, the crash is coming. The crash is coming. It's coming. I don't know. You tell me. Was there a crash in 2023? I don't know. I don't think so. At least not in my portfolio. Yeah, I might have had a little wobble here and there, but nothing significant. I, what, what I did have was a, 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 an explosion. Why? Because I was in the market. See, I'm in the market every day. I'm in the market 365 days a year. So I miss no boom days. But if I'm on the sideline waiting, trying to time the market, I missed all the good days. That's the problem with people who time the market. They never time it right. They always miss. That's why you got to be invested 365 days a year through dollar cost averaging, guys. Number one, number one, stop spending your money to make other people wealthy. And then take that money that you have converted from some building someone else's wealth to building your wealth and then get yourself dollar cost average in. For me personally, I buy S&P 500 ETFs, index funds that track the S&P 500 index. Boom. Right? I buy ETFs, index funds that track the total stock market. Boom. Oh, isn't that redundant? Not to me, it's not. One has the top 500 companies in America. The other got the top 3,000, 3,500 companies in America. Small cap, mid cap, large cap. This one over here is all big boy, large cap. Ain't redundant to me, but hey, do whatever you think is right for you in your, in your wealth building plan. My wealth building plan, I want to be in the broader stock market. And then I want to buy me some uh, sector ETFs, right? Tech, healthcare. Those are the two. Tech, healthcare, some individual stocks, right? That's it. Every single month, dollar cost average in. Good days, bad days, in between days, don't matter. History tells me if I do it long enough, I make money. My 20 years of doing this, 20 plus years of doing this, made me a lot of money, guys. All I'm telling you is it's up to you to get your mind right, though. A lot of us are, are, are in mental poverty. Why? Because we just, we just refuse, refuse to reprogram ourselves. We, 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 we hook, line, and sinker into this propaganda that we hear on TV, this propaganda that we hear on these podcasts, this propaganda we hear from people telling us, oh, yes, I'm going to change your life. Send me this. Send me $5,000. I'm going to teach you how to flip real estate. Oh, yeah. Send me $1,500. I'm going to teach you how to day trade. Oh, yeah. Send me $1,000. I'm going I'm to put you on my team and we're going to teach you how to trade Forex. All that is shortcut, guys. That's all it is. If it was that easy to trade Forex, if it was that easy to day trade, if it was that easy to flip real estate like a lot of these people, oh, flip real estate, no money, you ain't got to worry about no interest rates. But if it was that easy, guys, everybody be doing it. The reason everybody ain't doing it is because it's hard. It's hard. Less than 1% of people that day trade and Forex trade make any money. Less than 1%. 99% of people lose money. I've been doing this financial thing on YouTube for four years. Everybody that I've talked to that is day traded or Forex traded didn't make no money. They lost money. Why? Because it's hard. You got billion dollar companies with all the resources and the, the researchers and the MIT graduates and the Harvard everything that don't make no money doing it. So you think you're going to get in your little iPhone or your little smartphone or your laptop, but you're going to beat the system. 
This guy over here says, oh, get in my, get in my, uh, what do they call it? Little, 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 oh, discord. Get in my discord. Every morning, every night, I'm going to give you all my tips. I'm going to give you the secrets. Listen, guys, stop looking for shortcuts. Play the long game. Stop spending your money making other people wealthy. That's number one. Number two, come up with a strategy that you feel can build wealth for you. Hopefully, it's a, a proven strategy. A lot of people, oh, I don't want to teach my people how to, how to be like everybody else. I want them to be millionaires. I want them to be, you know, da -da 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 -da, all this other stuff people be talking about online, right? Listen, man, if you want to go listen to somebody that, you know, flashes all kind of Rolexes and flashes all kind of stuff and blah, 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 blah. listen, man, go ahead. Their lifestyle doesn't d d d dictate you go have that lifestyle. What you need to figure out is what type of lifestyle you want. And what does it take for you to get your lifestyle? Stop worried about somebody else's lifestyle. Stop imp trying to, to emulate somebody else's lifestyle. Figure out your lifestyle. And then figure out how much in assets you need to have in order to generate enough income to do what? Pay for that lifestyle. That's what I would recommend you do. Stop looking at these people on social media, guys. Please, stop. Stop. That's the problem. We spend way too much time on social media, way too much time strolling through our phones, watching somebody else's life. Oh, let me give them a heart. Oh, golly. Oh, what a cute dog. Let me give them a heart. Listen, man, stop it. Focus on your life. Change your life. Stop worrying about somebody else's life. Stop worrying about things you can't control. Worry about the things in your life you can control, like your spending habits like staying out of debt, like not living on more than what you make, like saving and investing. See, you can control them things, but you don't want to worry about that. You want to go over here and worry about uh, what Cat Williams said and all the, oh, I've been getting in here and arguing. Oh, golly, Cat Williams said this about my favorite comedian. That's all we want to do. We want to sit over here and worry about Cat Williams and and, 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 and Shannon Sharp and, oh, Shannon didn't ask him enough questions, all this other crap. Don't you know both of them brothers rich, wealthy? You broke. But yet and still, you in there fighting for somebody that don't even know who you are. But that's what we do in this country, man. This is what we do. We go fight with people about people that don't even know us. <laughs> I mean, don't even know us. We go fight with somebody online. Get our blood pressure all up. <laughs> These people don't even know you, man. Why? Because, see, over here in our life, we are so disappointed. Right? We're so embarrassed that the best thing for us to do is take our attention from our problems Lock on to some guy that don't even know us, some gal that don't even know us, and let's take on their problems. So I can forget mine, and I'm going to be a crusader for them. Forget being a crusader for my own life. Let me go be a crusader for Cat Williams, like he really need my help. Guys, we better wake up, man. You better wake up. 2024 is now. Wake up. Stop worrying about stuff that has nothing to do with you. Stop arguing with people on social media about crap that has nothing to do with you. Focus on your life. Get your, get your life right. Whatever aspects in your life that are raggedy right now, focus on them and get them unraggedy. Get them better. 2024 is going to be come and gone. And whatever activities you did in 2023... And the results that you got from those activities, you better, you, you better evaluate them. Now, if you got the right results, rinse and repeat in 2024. But if you got raggedy results, you get no results. I wouldn't take those same activities into 2024 if I got raggedy results in 23 from them. I wouldn't. I'd try to find me some different activities. But if I'm so busy worrying about Cat Williams and and all the rest of these celebrities who don't know you, don't care nothing about you, we're too busy worrying about that. 
I mean, goodness gracious. This, I mean, for real? Who cares? Who cares? Obviously, a lot of people. Shannon Sharp's video that he did with Cat Williams, his interview, got over 30 million views in a couple days. <laughs> I'm like, boy, y'all people ain't got nothing that's better to do in y'all life but sit right here and immerse yourself in somebody else's life. That's all it is. I just want to immerse myself in somebody else's life that don't even know me. But yet and still, I'll take two and a half hours to sit up here and watch that interview, but I won't take two and a half hours to sit down with myself and my family and figure out my financial direction in 2024. How many of y'all done that? I know a lot of y'all done already watched that little Cat Williams interview. How many of y'all done sat down and went through your financial situation with your family? Cat Williams don't know you. Cat Williams family straight. They straight. What about your family? But yet and still, you've given two and a half hours of your life you will never get back. Worried about somebody. And then guess what? You watch the interview and then you get into the comments and go to keyboard warrior either for or against Cat Williams. Go, he said something about my favorite comedian. <laughs> Boy, we a trip, man. We a trip. But we better get out of this, man. I'm telling you, 2024 going to run over you like a, like, a, like, a, like a freight train. Now, for y'all that have decided you want to change something in 2024, you have sat down, penciled in, penciled out those goals that I've talked about in previous videos. I did my live stream. I don't know if it was Friday or, or, or it was one day earlier in the week. I did a live stream. And I went through some things and, 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 and goals was the first thing I said we need to be working on. See, see for those of you who, 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 who come to this channel and, and, and take away some golden nuggets, kudos to you, right? Like I said, I'm not the only channel out here that gives out golden nuggets, but go somewhere and get some and then, and then act on them. But see, I, I'm telling you guys, it don't catch up to you till it catch up to you. It don't catch up to you until it catch up to you. So stop worrying about all this outside of your household crap. Worry about what's inside of your household, right? Worry about you and your family. Get you and your family straight financially. Get you and your family straight mentally. Get you and your family straight spiritually. Get you and your family straight from a, from a relational standpoint. Get you and your family straight from a health standpoint. See, that's what we should be doing. Not worrying about Cat Williams or, 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 or any of other comedians or, or, or any of these celebrities. I ain't got nothing against those folks, but I could care less. God bless them. That's all I can say for them. I don't care who like who and who don't like who. I really don't care. Don't, don't affect me. Don't affect me. What I'm concerned about is, is, is what's inside of these four walls here where I live. I ain't worried about the house three doors down. God bless them, pray for them, but I'm going to worry about what's in these, these walls. My family, me. More of you need to take on that attitude. Stop worrying about things that are outside of the walls that you live in. Please. Please, these people don't know you. If you walk down the street and say something to them, they probably wouldn't even say hello. That's sad, ain't it? But it's the truth, and you know it. But yet and still, we'll, 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 we will, I tell you, boy, we will spend hours and hours online crusading for somebody that don't even know us. How about spend hours and hours crusading for your own family? How about that? How about switch that up? Listen, guys, it's going to be critical. It's going to, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen here in this country and around the world if you're not already hip to it and what's happening. There's a wealth gap and it's getting wider. So you're going to have the haves and you're going to have the have nots. I don't know which one you want to be. I want to be a have. I don't want to be a have not. I'm telling you. Just, just pay attention to what's going on. It's happening. 
more and more. Think about it. Look at where we are from a consumption standpoint in the United States. Look at our consumption. Look at our consumption. In the third quarter of 2023, with inflation over 4%, we had a 5% GDP. With interest rates through the roof, that ain't even borrowing money to push it up. Mm -mm. Guys, that's not, that's not normal. That's not normal. That is not normal when you have 4% or higher inflation, you have 5.5% short-term interest rates, Fed funds rate, and you still do a 5% GDP in the third quarter of 2023. That's not normal. That tells me one thing. People are still in denial. They're in, in some fake believe world thinking everything gonna be okay until it's not. I'm telling you guys, that's not normal. All I'm telling you, Dan, telling you is batten down the hatches, the financial hatches. Stop spending money now. Start redirecting that money to assets. That would be my advice to you. If you got a car that you can't afford and you ain't upside down in it, Sell it right now. Sell it. If you're in a house that you got more house than you need, don't let pride get in the way, guys. See, pride going to end you up, keep you in that financial poverty line. Don't let your pride get in the way. Don't worry about what, you, what, what people going to say. Don't let your pride get in the way. If you got a house you can't afford, sell it, especially if you got equity in it. A lot of people got an oh, oh, uproar about, well, why would you tell people not to pay their mortgage off? Why would you, what, what do you mean not pay? Listen, man, if you want to pay your mortgage, I'll pay it off. I don't really care. I'm just, I'm just trying to make a case for the person who says, I don't want all my net worth tied up in this house when it's a dead asset. I'm just trying to make the case that, hey, maybe a house is just a house. I don't care about no house. It's just a house. If I got $400,000 worth of equity in it, and, 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 and if, if, if any little bump in the road, that $400,000 in equity can be turned into a negative $100,000 in equity, I'm going to be looking like a, a dummy. I'm trying to tell you, you got $400,000 worth of equity in your house, sell it. Especially if that's all your net worth. Because I'm telling you, if anything happens, and that 400 go from 400 in equity to negative 100,000 in equity, you're gonna be looking crazy. Cause that's what all your net worth is. You're gonna be zero net worth. You're gonna have nothing. Oh, but I got this, my, my house, I got a. Listen, man, it's a dead asset. You got an opportunity to take $400,000. A bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. Let me say that one more time. A bird in the hand is better than two birds in the bush. So you want to sit there, go right ahead. Go ahead. I'm telling you, most Americans' net worth is in their house. Which is subject to what? Decrease in value at any time. It don't say, well, hey, uh, hey, Richard, uh, in three months, we're going to do a 20%, 25% decline in real estate uh, values. I just want to let you know ahead of time, so prepare. You ain't going to get that warning, guys. It's just going to happen. One day you're going to wake up, instead of having $400,000 worth of equity, you're going to have a negative $100,000 in equity and a big old gigantic payment that you can't afford to pay. Just saying. Just saying, if all of my net worth is in my house, give me my net worth. Give it to me now. I live in an apartment. Uh, give me my 400K. What else you going to get 400K from if all hell break loose? What going to happen? What going to happen? What going to happen to you if, if, if real estate prices fall? Oh, that will never happen. Well, I said that in 2008. It would never happen, but it did. 
See, what y'all got to understand is y'all have no idea who really runs this country and who pulls the strings in this country and make assets go up and down in this country. We think, oh, it's Biden. It's Biden's fault. It's all Joe Biden's fault. This just shows you how little you understand. That just shows you how little you understand about how this country really works. Ain't no president got no ultimate power in this country. The people who hold the, the money have ultimate power in this country. You know that, right? Not one man or one woman. It's a network of people who are filthy, filthy rich. They control this country. They say when assets go up and when assets go down. So you sitting here with your little $400,000 in equity in your house and you think you on easy street in the back barbecuing, flipping hamburgers and hot dogs and ooh, I'm doing great. Go to bed, wake up the next day, all hell done broke loose. All I'm telling you guys is this. Protect your assets. Protect your net worth. Protect your money. It does you no good to have $400,000 in a house that may or may not have that $400,000 in equity tomorrow. Bird in the hand, better than two in the bush. Think about it. That's all I'm saying. You do whatever you want to do. It's your financial plan. It's your financial life. But if it was me, give me my cash. I got a house right now. I got up for sale, my other house. A lot of people, well, why don't you just put a, a tenant in it and rent it? No, because it got $400,000 worth of equity in it. I don't care about no tenants right now. I want my 400 grand. I don't know what going to happen to that house. I don't know what going to happen with the real estate economy. I'd be doggone if I leave my 400,000 in there trying to get greedy. Give me my money now. And it's up for sale. It's going to sell. I don't know when, but it will. All I'm telling you is, guys, is when you look at that, when you look at your assets, anything that's not readily turned into cash quickly, you, gotta, you, you better start thinking about how, how, do, how do I get out of this? How do I, I had a conversation a few months ago with, 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 with a, a subscriber of mine. She said, Richard, I got a million dollars worth of equity in my house. Kids are gone, but that's all my net worth. That's everything I have is in that million bucks. Nothing else over here. Nothing. That's where it's at. What should I do? I said, uh, what's your game plan? I mean, you already said the house is more house than you need. I mean, wh wh why would you hold on to it? What's causing you to hold on to it? Well, you know, the kids grew up here and we, we got so many, uh, uh, so many memories. I don't know if the memory is going to pay no bills or take care of you if, if, if the cash flow stop. Uh, memories are great, but I don't think they pay the light bill. I don't think you can go in the grocery store and pay them with memories. I don't think so. So all I'm telling you is build you some more memories or take them memories and take them with you and build some more. But, 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 but a million dollars in equity in my house and I got no other net worth and it's all right there. And I'm trying to, I, I'm like, like I'm Teflon Don. Uh -uh. I got to get rid of that thing. I got to. So whatever your situation is, figure it out. Right. Hey, you, hey, you want to live in your house for the rest of your life? Go ahead. Hey, it's your financial plan. You do whatever you want. But if it's me, I'm getting out of it, right? I'm going to take my cash, especially if that's all I got. It's one thing if I got the house, but I got another mill ski over here and, and, and cash and marketable securities. You know what I'm saying? Got no consumer debt. I'm doing good. Got the nice. I get it. But if I don't got none of this, I got a bunch of consumer debt and all my equity in the house. And if I get fired, I'm at, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at the whim of maybe losing the house because I ain't going to be able to make the, the mortgage payment. I'm not going to be able to make the mortgage payment. I don't know. See, me, I would take the cash and then I would take a portion of the cash and I'd put it in something that could multiply. I'd have me a nice reserve piece and the rest of it I'd put in something. I, I would stagger it, right? I would stagger it. I would have a conservative component. I would have a moderate component. 
And then I would have an aggressive component, depending upon how old I am, right? If I'm an older person, I may not have the aggressive component. It may just be conservative. I just want to protect my million dollars or my 400,000, my three. I want to just protect it because I'm 55, I'm 60, I'm 65. I can't go through another down cycle. But if I'm a younger person and I'm saying to myself, shoot, I'm 30, 40, I need growth. Then I may have a little bit bigger chunk in, in something aggressive, like, like equities. That's all I'm saying. So it just depends on where you're at in your financial journey and what does this money represent? If it's your last, take care of it. I wouldn't be too, I, I just take care of it if it's my last, right? But if it's not my last, it's just extra equity, extra cash that I can put into something and make it work for me, then I might think about, you know, what can I put it in to multiply? Uh, what type of return would I like to have? And then what does that return do to the amount of money that I put in there? So you got to kind of have that conversation with yourself. But by no stretch of the imagination, would I have all of my equity locked up in illiquid assets that are subject to what? Fluctuation that I can't get the money out quickly before it's all gone. See, in the stock market, I got my money in the stock market, but at a click of a button, I can liquidate it. See, I can't click of a button and liquidate my 400000 in my real estate property. No. I can't. That's going to take me 30, 60, 90, 120 days, depending upon where I live at in the country and how hot the real estate market is. That's just too long of a time for, for the market to decline on me before I can get rid of the asset. Right. So all I'm saying is, is if, 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 if all you have is that is that pandemic real estate equity that we got when we saw when the pandemic came through and everybody started rushing out, out of the cities to buy houses and all the, high, all the prices went sky high, all the values went sky high. If you still holding on to that, 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 that good fortune, that good fortune ain't promised to you in the future, guys. I'm telling you, think about a strategy around that equity. Again, I'm not telling you to sell your house. I'm not telling you to do equity lines. I'm not telling you to do anything you don't want to do. I'm just telling you what I would do. There is no way on God's green earth, if all I have to my name is tied up in my house, I'm going to leave it there. Thinking it'll never, nothing will never happen to it. Yes, it will. It can. Look at history. Look at history, right? Any asset, I don't care if it's paper assets, real estate, a business, gold and silver, antiques and collectibles, whatever. They're all subject to fluctuation in value. All of them. They all are. Some I can turn into cash quicker than others. So for me having my money, a big part of my net worth in the market, I can just sell it. Touch of a button. Okay, I might take a 10% haircut, but I got 90 of it left. So be careful. Be careful. Number one, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. So, so the last thing I, I, I want to just go through real quickly and, and, then, and then, then I'm going to wrap up. Number one thing, do what? Stop spending money to make other people wealthy. Number one priority in 2024, I got to stop spending money to make other people wealthy. I got to take said money that I've stopped spending to make other people wealthy. I got to take said money and do what with it? Make me wealthy. Stop spending money to make other people wealthy. Take said money, make me wealthy, right? How do I make me wealthy? I got to buy assets. I got to take the money that I was taking and giving to someone else to, to send their family on nice vacations, to, to, to buy summer homes, to buy private jets, right? All of that stuff these rich people and wealthy people buy with the money that you spend on whatever you spend on, right? Take that money and do what with it? Put it in assets. Paper assets, real estate, businesses, whatever that can go up in value over time. What should be my expectation long term? None of the short term, I'm gonna hit a home run stuff. Nine out of 10 times you're gonna strike out. So don't go out trying to hit home runs. 
Just hit singles and doubles. The occasional triple. No home runs. Most of us are not home run hitters. I'm not a home run hitter. Right? So all you got to do is play the long game. Find yourself a good ETF, a good index fund that tracks the S&P, or tracks the total stock market, or tracks your favorite sector. Make sure it's with a company who has a proven track record of performance. They're not all the same guys, right? S&P 500 index, there are many companies down there that track it, but those companies down there are not all the same. Some charge higher expense ratios than others, right? How do you tell? Well, go into each one of them and go down and look at what are they charged for me to be in this fund? It's called an expense ratio. The higher it is, the more they're going to eat away at your return. The lower it is, the less fees you pay. The more it is, the more fees you pay. And then you need to look at the historical performance of that fund compared to the S&P 500 index. So if I go look at the S&P 500 index and for the last 10 years, it had a 12% annualized rate of return over that 10 year period, then I go look at ETF company A and theirs is 10%, not 12%, something's wrong. Why? Because they're tracking, they should have the same thing or very close. Why would theirs be less when they got the same 500 companies that the S&P 500 have, right? So you got to understand these funds that you're getting into, you better look at their historical performance compared to the S&P, and then you better look at their expense ratios, right? So those are the things I would say to look at if you're gonna, if you're gonna invest in paper assets. I would say stay away from individual stocks unless you're just gonna take a small percentage of your, your, your money that you're gonna be putting in and dabble in that. Me personally, I got an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of my money goes into what? ETFs, index funds that fall into what? Total stock market, S&P, my favorite sectors. So 80% of my money goes into ETFs that, that go into those three buckets. 20% of my money will go into individual stocks of big boy blue chip companies that have a proven track record of success. That's all I do. Nothing fancier than that. Very simple, very straightforward. That's why a lot of people, oh, you got a financial advisor? No, I don't need one. I had 20 years of doing this. It's been fine for me. Oh, could you? You probably would have made more money. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't care. I enjoy doing it on my own because I ain't trying to be the expert. I'm just going to lean on investments that have a historical track record of killing it. That's all. That's all I do. I just lean on investments that have a historical track record of killing it. And if you guys want to go find out what all that is, go look at my channel. It's well documented. Exactly what I use. Not that you got to use it, but it's documented what I use. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate y'all rocking with me tonight, hanging in there. I know I went a little long tonight, but um, yeah, man, I just think we, we, need to, we need to focus. Financial poverty. It's real. And it's just not somebody out there on the street. It's just not somebody who, like I told you earlier, who, who, who in the bread line. No. No. There are a lot of Americans in financial poverty. They just don't know it. Like I said, if your assets are less than your liabilities, you're in financial poverty. If you miss one paycheck and, and, and you're financially ruined, you're in financial poverty. It, it, that's the way it is. That's the way I see it. So do something to get yourself out of that in 2024. Do something to get yourself out of that in 2024. And hopefully, hopefully you listen to some of the stuff that I said tonight and you'll take some of it away and seriously consider controlling what's in your house. Stop trying to control things that are outside of your house. It's a waste of time. You'll never get that time back. Focus on your own household. Stop focusing on someone else's household. Just yours. Guys, if you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button. Thoughts become things.
If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Also, I want you guys to stay healthy and get wealthy in 2024. Peace.